to Ecuador in part to create a center, a place for education and studying for a sustainable future. So when Joanne came to us and said, could you come and speak to an English class about sustainability, I said, whoa, English, sustainability. <laughs> For many years, I have studied the question of sustainability. And, and the problem is that we obviously do not have a sustainable planet. And obviously, the Copenhagen conference that recently took place did not solve the problem. And the reason why they didn't solve the problem was because the solutions that we seek must be radical very, very important, very deep solutions. The, there are solutions in energy which most people don't know about. And for many years I have studied this and have written books about it. And I have traveled the world and visited many inventors of clean energy devices. And those energy sources have been suppressed. They have been denied by people that want to keep drilling oil and go for dirty energy sources. Now, next week, I will be Siatente Anwas, 70 years old. And I, I think I still have work. Thank you. <laughs> <Thank> you. <laughs> And I, I, I think I still have work to do. <laughs> and the work I have to do is to educate younger people to understand what is possible. And what is possible, for example, in the energy, uh, in, in, in the energy policy of governments is that we can have clean breakthrough energy for humanity in the future. The problem is not technical, it's social and political. And so what I'm going to talk about today is how severe, how difficult this problem of sustainability is, and the fact that we have solutions, and the fact that Ecuador could be a great place to implement those solutions. So for example, and I, I apologize, I uh, had a PowerPoint in Spanish which we couldn't get onto the computer, so it must be in English. Uh, but between 1940, which was the year I was born, 70 years ago, and actually uh, now the current year, which is 2010, <laughs> hard to believe, um, these are the, some of the statistics about how things have, have, have happened on our planet. And it's very, very negative. The population has gone up three times. Energy use has gone up five times. Number of automobiles, 15 times. Do you understand what I'm saying? It's, it's just, we've been just destroying the earth. It's unsustainable. And we're getting more and more and more all the time. Yeah. Well, that's OK. That's plenty of. Um, there, there's mucho, mucho mas. <laughs> uh, and that's a problema, a grande problema. And um, so we have to do something about this. The people in Copenhagen and the leaders of the world aren't solving the problem. So uh, during the first week of February, some people, very, very intelligent people, innovators, will be coming to Motosuenos from all over the world. And we're going to talk about many, many innovations and technologies, uh, such as free energy. I, I know they exist because I've been there and I've seen them work in laboratories all over the world. But the oil companies don't want this to happen. So we have a problem here, don't we, which is that very powerful interests are keeping us from moving forward to clean up the planet. Now, if we look at the example of Ecuador, Ecuador, as we all know, has a lot of oil. And uh, 
the oil companies are going in to drill for the oil and are leaving a mess behind. For example, uh, Chevron Texaco went into the Oriente and they made a mess of things and many people died because of the pollution that was left behind. So the indigenous people who were very, very, um, that got very sick and were killed by this very, very dirty practice are now suing Chevron Texaco for $27 billion. And, and now uh, there is a very big issue that I think you should all be aware of, a very important issue, and that is uh, Yasuni National Park. Okay. Uh, here's the problem, and this is probably the most important picture I'm going to show you today. Uh, let's see. There, okay. This is Ecuador. We're right about here. This is Peru and Brazil, Bolivia, Colombia. And what you see here is this is where the places or blocks of land that have been uh, leased out for oil drilling. It's almost the entire western Amazon region. It's the last great big rainforest left on earth. And now it's being threatened by oil drilling. When I saw this slide, I, I got very, very upset and angry. So we see that there are many conflicts, many clashes between the indigenous people and the environmentalists on the one hand and on uh, the government and the oil companies on the other hand. Shows the parts of Ecuador that are being reserved for oil drilling. It's almost the entire Oriente region, this whole region. We're, we're right about, there's Podocarpus and we're right here. <laughs> and within this region is Yasuni National Park. And within Yasuni National Park, there is a very oil rich region called the ITT block right here. That region, that block, has been a big controversy worldwide because, in the next slide please, uh, the, the next slide, uh, well let's see, let's go a few more. There are many threats to this very, very valuable rainforest. And yet the oil companies are building roads in there and the indigenous people want to be left alone. Next slide. So President Correa and Alberto Acosta have proposed that the oil in Yasuni in this particular region be kept in the ground. And this is a very, very bold, brave proposal uh, because nobody has ever kept oil in the ground where there's oil. Usually, um, the oil companies have their way. They say, we want to go into the Amazon, that's it, we're going to go and drill. You indigenous people just stay out of the way, we're going to pollute your water, and so forth. But what Ecuador is doing is it's saying to the rest of the world, if you match funds, if you give us some money to keep oil in the ground, we will also put up that amount of money to keep oil in the ground. And that would be the money that would come from the, drilling the oil. Nobody in the world has ever done that before. E Ecuador was the first country that proposed keeping the oil in the ground.